Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn with MedNuggets. This is the second video of our question and answer series. If you haven't checked out our first video, I have linked it in the description box below and make sure you go and check that out. So now let's dive right into today's question. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A hospitalized 57-year-old man has had severe progressive pain in his left knee since awakening two hours ago. He was admitted to the hospital two days ago for an acute MI. Okay, so a 57-year-old man has been admitted to the hospital for an acute MI two days ago and now he all of a sudden develops left knee pain, right? Cardiac cath shows occlusion of the lad and he underwent placement of a stent. Current meds include aspirin, metoprolol, lisinopril, simvastatin, clopidogrel and heparin. Vital signs are within normal limits. Examination of the knee shows a large effusion. The knee is hot to touch and erythematous. He holds the knee in 30 degrees of, of flexion. The pain is exacerbated with further flexion or extension. And labs show a hematocrit of 40%, which is normal. A white count of 13,000, which is slightly elevated. Serum calcium, urea nitrogen, creatinine and albumin, they are all normal. An x-ray of the left knee shows calcification of the synovium. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? All right, so now let's try to figure out the answer, right? When you read the first two lines of a question, it's good if you can come to a few differential diagnoses in your head by the time you finish reading the first two lines of the question, right? So usually if a patient presents with unilateral leg pain and swelling, um, the differential diagnosis that should come to your head are things like DVT, cellulitis, lymphedema, and stuff like that. But when you read this question, you can see that the entire question is focusing on knee pain rather than leg pain and swelling. It's focusing on knee pain and swelling, right? Usually when you read a question really fast, you tend to miss important points, right? So, um... When you read the first two lines of this question, if you read it really fast and and it was like, you know, hospitalized 57-year-old man has had severe progressive pain in his leg since awakening two hours ago. He was admitted to the hospital two days ago for an acute MI. It sounds like a DVT, right? But the important thing you need to note, uh, note here is that it is left knee pain. It's not left leg pain, right? Okay, now let's try to rule out the other, the answer options, right? So this is not DVT, right? And um, in case you were thinking like about this physical examination finding, he holds the knee in 30 degrees of flexion. The pain is exacerbated with further flexion or extension. You know, in DVT, there's a physical examination finding, a sign called the Homan sign, right? So um, the Homan sign means uh, basically when you dorsiflex the foot with your knee straight, it can cause calf pain. It can elicit calf pain or leg pain, right? That is Homan's sign. So the physical examination sign they're talking about in this question is not the Homan's sign. So don't get confused and think this is the Homan's sign and tick answer A, right? And yeah, answer B, gonorrhea. This can't be gonorrhea because um, this, patient is the, this patient is not having a fever. If it is an infection, if it is any infectious organism, the patient would have a very high fever and the question would talk about that high fever. The question would literally tell, it would literally say, oh, this patient is having a fever of 39 degrees Celsius or something like that. But in this question, they haven't mentioned a single thing about the patient having a high fever. So this is unlikely to be an infection or gonorrhea for that same matter, right? And also gonorrhea is a common condition in it's commonly found in sexually active people and the question doesn't mention anything about um his sexual activity right and this patient's white count is only slightly elevated when it comes to infections like gonorrhea we need to have a look at the synovial white count rather than the serum uh, white cell count so a synovial white blood cell count of more than 50000 would indicate oh, okay this is gonorrhea that we are dealing with right so this is not gonorrhea and then gout. A hot and erythematous knee can also be seen in conditions like gout. It's a classic presentation of gout, but an X-ray of the left knee, but an X-ray of the knee would never show calcification of the synovium in gout. 
that is not a characteristic feature of gout and also gout is a condition that is common in patients taking thiazide diuretics at least in your exam questions um ACE inhibitors and low doses of aspirin can also cause gout um but in your exam questions they always like to go after thiazide diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide and stuff like that option d hemarthrosis yeah this can't be hemarthrosis because hemarthrosis is common in patients with acl tears when you tear your acl you can start bleeding into your knee joint right acl tears are common in football players because it happens when you suddenly twist your knee so this can't be hemarthrosis then option f septic arthritis again uh the white the white cell count is uh only slightly elevated in this question we would expect a very high white cell count in the case of septic arthritis and also the patient would um, have a high fever but the question doesn't say anything about a fever like i uh, mentioned when it came to gonorrhea right and this leaves us with pseudogout which is the correct answer to this question a characteristic feature of pseudogout that helps you differentiate it from gout is that the x-ray of the knee would show calcification of the synovium that is a characteristic feature found in found on the x-rays in patients with pseudogout that easily helps you differentiate it from gout because they both present similarly they both present with a tender red knee joint right so the correct answer here is pseudogout and that brings us to the end of our question and answer video we hope you learned something from it thanks for watching and have a great day